I don't know. Am I part of the four over there being spoken about? But if you look at it, in Africa or in Africa in general as a whole, I'm one of the biggest content creators, particularly that comment about church solely. Okay, so he can't be talking about people who are outside. He's talking about people that are in church that make a critic, uh, critical view over pastors, right? And it's that there's four of them that are going out there and they're going to get heavy judgment rained upon them. Now, I'm going to show the believability of that message by looking at the Bible. I'll look at what does Ricky do? I'm going, that's, that's the format of this video. And then if you are an apologist or if you are one of these people, Use this format here, what I'm going to give you, the verses that I'm going to give you. Use the Bible. Okay? Don't trust people too much. Do not trust people too much. Even if you love the man, if you love Pastor Ian Lovu, yeah, you can keep him in prayer and all the whole watches, but do not trust people wholly. Okay? Mandams can be very weird sometimes. So, I'm going to give you a layout of whether personally I think what he's saying it's just true or just why is what you're saying different from what the bible says the bible says rebuke sharply we are on our own we love you pastor ian it's okay it's good man them but we have realized we are sheep and we are on our own don't worry we'll make it We'll make it, we'll be fine, don't worry, don't, 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 don't worry yourself. Now, if you guys remember, some days ago, I made a video saying that, oh, Pastor Ian Lovu looks like he understands the apologetics movement, which is very important, because the Bible does talk about it. I made references, and you would remember when we spoke about, always be ready to give an, an account or an answer for the hope that is in you, the word that's used there, it's apologia, in the Greek. And that word means to make a defense. So always be ready to make a defense. Now, if you listen to what Pastor Ian Drove is saying, he's saying there is no defense. It's very confusing at this point. And this is exactly what I've said before. Because he doesn't say who, he says four people. Now, you could just put me in there. I don't know. Am I in there? We don't know, but both me and you, if we are in there, will use the Bible to determine, right? Because it doesn't name any names, I've said this again. People, it, go, it takes people on a guess game type of chairs here. So you can understand where my particular video stands here. So if it's me or if it's you, <laughs> who is talking about, let's use the Bible to tell whether... Because on this video, if you check that video, I'll leave it down in the description below so you can go check the full video. If you're a follower, I saw people over there who were repenting. They were saying, oh, I repent of being critical of men of God. And I'm like, this is absolutely sad. That's why I said this is a very sad video. But anyways, for each and every man, his own. But I have a message at the end after I give you these verses. Uh, so do stick around so we can get to that particular. But I won't take too much time. Acts chapter number 17, the Bible speaks about the Bereans. And what was the Bereans doing? You have to read Acts chapter number 7. Now, for those people that are too busy, it's too much, you know, you're taking care of the kids and whatnot, and you don't have time to refer back to the Bible, to search or research. Channels like mine are made for that. We are resource channels. That's why we say subscribe to the channel so you may get other videos. Other videos done today will be down in the pinned comments. That's why we say that constantly. It's so that you are alert and aware of what does the Bible say. In case you haven't studied it, I'll give you reference points so that you know where to start. Acts chapter number 7 talks about the Bereans. And this particular group of people, they used to refer back to the Bible what they've been taught. So someone teaches them something, they go back to the Bible to, to confirm it's really in the Bible, and then they would believe it. They didn't believe a man just like that. I don't believe because you say you're a man of God. For all I know, you are a, you are a wolf. Yeah? For all I know, you are a wolf and you are what the... The, the, the book of Matthew labels out. Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 15. He says, beware of false prophets. They come to you, not with horns. They come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. So how do you tell what's inwardly? So when he says inwardly they are ravening wolves, they make merchandise of people. They use fear, intimidation, 
They don't use the, the Bible. It's not enough. They have to use tricks and whatnot to get around. So that's how you tell a man of God. Is that inwardly, when you see what lies inwardly by what they preach, it tells you what kind of a person you're dealing with. Okay? And so I cannot just be trusting according to chapter number 17 of Acts because you might be a wolf shipped up. I will be able to tell by what you teach. And so I'm very much scared that after uh, Pastor Ian thinks that people that are skeptical of pastors are in judgment. They're going to be judged by God. I'm, I'm very much, uh, that's, that's scary stuff for me. But it means that, do we know what the Bible actually says about the subject? If you read Jeremiah chapter number 50, it is a message that has come all the way from Israel to, the, to Judaism and also all the way to us. Jeremiah chapter number 50, verse number 5 up until 7. This is what it says. And they will ask uh, the way to Jerusalem and they will turn their faces towards it. Okay, these are unbelievers. They will come to faith basically. And and he says, and they will, uh, and they will, they will come and join themselves to the Lord uh, in an everlasting covenant. Okay, the message of salvation that will never be forgotten. My people are lost. He says, okay. My people are lost sheep. Their shepherds have led them astray. That's the day and age where we are living. People are being led astray by shepherds. You mustn't be skeptical of. You mustn't question like the Bereans that we read about earlier on. Okay? He says, cause them, who caused them to roam around the mountains? They have wandered uh, from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. Their resting place is God. But they've been made to rely on men so much that they, they, they no longer have foundation. They no longer have foundation. When you call out people, they say that when I, judgment is coming to you. <laughs> this is what he warns against. He says there are these people, the ship is confused now. Listen to this verse. Verse number seven, it says, all who, all who have found them have devoured them. They have not comforted them. They have not told them where their resting place is. No, they have devoured. They have taken them for advantage. They have shown them the arm. They have dealt with them with the arm. Shepherds. He says they have, they have devoured them. And he says their enemies said, we are not guilty. Those people who were wrong, who did them wrong, they said, no, we are not guilty. So for Pastor Ian to say, don't just, don't criticize. Why? Because those false prophets that we are questioning, their teachings, and some of them are not false prophets. They are misled. They teach things that are not biblical. They have said, no, I'm innocent. So you don't call them out because they don't know they are in error. Okay. He says, for they have sinned against the Lord. They are true pasture, the Lord, the hope of of their father. So these people have been lost for so long that they don't even know which way is right. They are wandering in the hills. Why? Their shepherds have led them astray. So why not call those people out? So when we are talking about those people who were there commenting, apologizing, repenting, you were repenting from what? Now that's the Bible. There are people who are lost in there. Your skepticism towards that. That's how some people have found this channel. I was talking to one particular lady. She says a friend of her constantly was sending her videos. And she refused. And she refused to watch them. She says for a year she refused to watch. Until the friend came to her. <laughs> and said you are going to watch these videos. She turned on the notification and subscribed to the channel. And she started watching the videos. And little did she know that these things were... She was in these places, but she didn't know. So if you are not showing or criticizing what they are teaching, how will they know? Even the Bible says that. How will they know if nobody has preached unto them? But anyways, that's Jeremiah chapter number thing. Let's go to another different book, right? To the New Testament. So someone might say, no, but that's Old Testament, Ricky. Fine. John chapter number 10, verse 11 up until 13. 
This is what it says. It says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. He doesn't take advantage of them. He lays down his life for his sheep. The hired man, okay, the hired hand is the shepherd. Uh, and the sheep uh, is the shepherd, is not a shepherd. And the sheep are not his own. He says when he sees a wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. This is where I'm, I'm asking questions. Are we not abandoning the sheep when we leave them to say, don't criticize? When we tell them to repent for, for what the Bible tells them to do, to be a Berean and question what they are being taught. No judgment will come over you. Are you, told, are you not running away? Just asking a question. Are you not running away? Me, I'm not running anywhere. <laughs> Me, I'll be here. I'm not running away. If you want to run away, it's okay. He says he abandoned the hired man. He runs away. He will not let him. So he said, then the wolves um, pounce on them and shatters, uh, scatters the flock. Why? Because they are now in confusion. He says the man runs away because he is only a hired servant and is not concerned for the sheep. If you are concerned for the sheep, your criticism of the particular teachings that they are putting out there helps those that are in there that are confused. That's New Testament now. Now, that verse that I then highlighted, Matthew chapter number 7, verse number 15, beware of them. He says that they are wolves in sheep clothing, meaning the outside they look legit. They are in amongst us. Now, if that's not clear, let's go back to Old Testament again and talk about those ones who, who are being said. Now, there are people that are, might be skeptical of pastors in general, and you will hear they, they, they attack the church. Okay? We've addressed those ones. It's with clarity to say, I know. This is not <laughs> when you're not a thing. We go back into Isaiah chapter number 56, verse 10 up until 12. And listen to what it says about these people who are in the forefront. These people that might be seen there and judgment is coming upon them. He says, his watchmen are blind. So they are watchmen who see these things and they are blinded. Interesting. And he says, they are ignorant. They are I, you will have to read the rest of it. <laughs> Go and read. He says they are dumb dogs. That's not me. That's what the first says. He says they are, why? Because they can't smell, right? So they are dogs which, whose senses have. You understand? It's not an insulting statement. They cannot bark. So they can't tell others. Excuse me. There's a problem here. They can't bark for nothing. It's not an insult. You understand? Mm -hmm. Sleeping. They lay down. He says they love slumber. <laughs> you know what? I remember this verse. I was like, hey, this verse is very telling. They love slumber. You can become, you can become so comfortable in your life that you think you found the truth to a point where you no longer care about the sheep, as Jeremiah was saying. You've lost love for the for the. Now, if you love slumber, please continue loving slumber, but don't tell us slumber is the way that... So I'm careful when I hear that message, I'm very concerned because... Wait a minute. So you're telling me that God wants us to avoid things and to love slumber. I got a problem with that. I, I, I see many problems coming from that. But... We don't have to address that. We can just leave it there. So they la they're laying down. They love slumber. They are watchmen, but they are no longer watching. So when we are telling people, don't be skeptical, don't question, don't judgment is coming. What are we telling them? Love slumber. That's not me. That's a verse. Relax, chill. Don't say nothing. Let the wrong be wrong. Where? If you say, where? If you say, when Paul saw... Uh, the church, uh, this particular temple is not able to, to identify whether God was God or what not. He went in there and he said, yeah, no, uh, here there is no, there's no God. There is no such a thing as an unknown God. He went in there as an apologist and tackled what they believed. No, love slumber. Relax, chill, sit on the corner. Don't say nothing. I don't know if you are hearing what 
the prophecy from God says, or if you're hearing the Bible, I know what the Bible says. I don't know what anybody else says. The last one that I'll put forward, it's Acts chapter number 20, verse 28 up until 30. And it says, keep watch over yourselves. So, at least you start loving slumber. He says, keep watch over yourself and the entire flock which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers over. I don't have church position. I watch over God's flock. It's my position. If judgment, I don't know which God exactly because this one tells me, watch over yourself and also the flock. You don't watch over yourself only, you watch over the flock as well. There are people who are God's flock, who are under these charlatans. And we must point them to the truth and say, question what your pastor is saying. It's not biblical. I dare. He didn't quote any verse. By the way, a lot of times when people give these prophecies and so forth, there's no Bible verse that they read. It's what God told them, Right? Yeah, no, I don't know if that word is, is from God because me, when I read the Bible, I get a different message. I could have quoted a hundred verses. I only chose five. If you read Jeremiah, you read Isaiah, it is all you hear. But anyways, let's continue. He says, watch over yourself and the entire, don't watch only your particular one. You watch the entire flock and you are telling people, don't, 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 don't watch, don't, don't. Okay. Okay. He says, be shepherds of the church of God. Be. This is not position. Be a shepherd. Watch over the... Okay. Listen to this part. And he says, and there's another verse as well. Remember that says, watch over yourself and over the doctrine. So that the... Because the doctrine both preserves you and preserves those that listen to you. That's another Bible verse right there. And it says, be shepherds of the church of God. It's not your church, it's his church. Be careful about that, becoming owners of a church. Which he purchased with his own blood. Unless your church isn't purchased by his blood, then we understand. Verse 29, it says, and I know that when I depart, savage wolves will come in amongst you. Be careful not to call charlatans men of God. Okay? He says they, they will be savage. These are not just wolves. No, these ones are ruthless. Don't criticize. Just keep quiet and sit down and watch. Don't watch over them. They will come, savage wolves will come in amongst you and will, will not spare the flock. They won't spare them. Even from your own number, not only outside your congregation, so they, won't, they won't be in another charlatan seat, but they'll be in your own church. You will have such people. He says, men will rise up, distort the truth, and draw away disciples after them. They draw disciples after themselves. That's what the Bible tells us to watch over. People who will come and draw. They will use the Bible to draw people out. We have to watch over the flock. Me, I'll be here. From here till the day I die, I'll be here. So, I don't know, maybe I was not included there, but... If you are one of them that he's talking about, that there is a prophecy of judgment over you, uh, you use this criteria to determine what you are doing. If your care is for the flock, as you saw the verses, and you yourself are not being manipulative towards the flock, you make a judgment. What, which one is it? The, the, our, and bear in mind, he says, watch over yourself and the flock. So the same thing, the same care that I would take over myself, I take for another person. You know, I don't say me, I'm safe, then hands off. The Bible puts it out. Now, that particular message that I said I wanted us to talk about, it is very sad for me to say, we are on our own. It's a very sad message for me to say, um, 
we are on our own here okay yeah to look out to any of these pastors or so forth um, you know you can be a pastor respect it's fine we'll attend church and everything but to look to you to defend the flock I can't I can't wait for a church to defend the flock I don't know if you're going to my duty is what I do here you know yeah so we are on our own here you know the nigerians they just finished the elections people were hoping that peter will be will win and so forth and stuff like that and some billionaires win and you're like <laughs> you know we are on our own if you think about it we are on our own to wait for these pastors to confirm that you know what what you are seeing is there no they will prick you to repent over what the Bible tells you to do, <laughs> I don't know, you know, and so it is a sad, mo it is a sad uh, message to hear, warning people that are vigilant to not be vigilant. And notice there, if you are vigilant for yourself, you are not vigilant for yourself only, according to Acts chapter number twenty. You are vigilant for yourself and for others. That's what Acts says. That's not me. That's what the verse says. And also, it says that because you care for the sheep. And you see that care for the sheep in John chapter number 10. He says the hired man cannot lay his life. We are on our own. If you are waiting for a pastor, you know, I'm not saying don't listen to Pastor Ian. You can listen to him and so forth and whatnot. But to expect him to rebuke when a false doctrine arises, good luck with that. Good luck with that. If you just just saying that's exactly what pastor chris was saying some time ago no don't criticize pastors don't criticize. but what if the pastor is teaching a wrong teaching even the the pastors that are in the right they do sometimes err but no don't criticize don't question the bible says rebuke them sharply so that others will learn and then a pastor comes and tells you don't why is what you're saying different from what the bible says the bible says rebuke sharply we are on our own. We love you, Pastor Ian. It's okay. It's good, Mandam. But we have realized we are sheep and we are on our own. Don't worry. We'll make it. We'll make it. We'll be fine. Don't worry. Don't, 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 don't worry yourself. We will be fine. Our shepherd is the Lord, and not you guys. It's okay. You can run churches, collect the offering, tell us how much we must give. If you want to increase it, you can also increase it. Maybe you can make it 15% tithe. You know, do whatever you guys want. But we are clearly on our own. You know? It's a sad realization. It's a sad thing that a lot of pastors just want to agree. It's okay. It's good. We like it for when you guys become clear it helps us so that we know how to navigate forward. We are on our own. Bazalad. Yeah. Now, if you're here to defend Pastor Ian, there's no need. Don't worry. Relax. Okay? Yes. I'm just telling you, you going on that video and repenting doesn't make sense. When the Bible tells you to rebuke them sharply. When the Bible says all scripture is given for rebuke, for correction in righteousness the bible tells you to do all you are being told not to do none the pastor does something wrong don't do none i'll be good it's ricky and i'll see you on the next episode on this particular episode that's what i wanted to just remind people um when you see me not your enemy i'm just here to highlight alert you to something and that thing you've never had me send you to a church I want your discernment to be on high alert so that you will know to distinguish when a person is wrong and when a person is right. When a pastor teaches something that you cannot find in the Bible, I come back and I highlight it. That's the only thing I do. My duty as a watchman is to keep watch. That's it. Not starting a church. We might do Bible studies here and there. That's it. Not starting a church. I'm not drawing disciples after me. Mm-mm. But to say that people should not be skeptical or not to be questioning 
when the book of Acts, is literally, chapter number 17, literally says they must question, I don't understand that. I completely don't get it. You cannot run away from the correction of the Bible. The Bible says all scripture is made for rebuke, correction, and then you say, no, don't question. So you are literally taking away other aspects of the scripture. What scripture are you believing? We are on our own. Learn it. Be at rest with it. Yeah, and be chilled out knowing what I know to expect. That's why they don't talk about the falsehoods that happen in the church. They don't. They don't talk about it because, hey, you know what? <laughs> don't criticize. When the Bible literally tells you to do that, I've shown you verses and I've quoted others in the middle of it. Repute them sharply so that others will learn, the Bible says. And then you are being told, don't question. The Bible says, false prophets will arise amongst you. Don't question. You tell me what you're hearing.